In this video, we're going to focus on solving elevator problems. So in this problem, we have an 80 kilogram man standing on a scale inside an elevator. So let's start with a picture. And so this is the scale. And let's say the person is standing on the scale. Now, what is the weight in newtons that the scale will read when the elevator is at rest. So let's draw a free body diagram. So there's the weight force of the person and there's an upward force known as the normal force that is acting on the person. So the person exerts a downward weight force and the scale exerts an upward normal force on a person. Now what you need to understand in this problem is that the scale it doesn't always read the weight force. Depending on if the how the elevator if it's moving upward or downward, the normal force is what the scale reads, and that can fluctuate based on where the elevator is moving. However, at rest, the scale will read the weight force when it's at rest. But let's come up with a way to get that answer. So let's write an expression, the sum of all forces in the y direction. And that's equal to the upward normal force. Because it's upward, it's in a positive y direction, we're going to put a plus sign in front of it. And then the weight force is in the negative y direction, so we're going to put a negative sign in front of it. Now remember, it's important to understand that the scale doesn't always read the weight force, rather, it reads the normal force. Now the sum of all forces in the y direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. According to Newton's second law, F equals ma. Now the elevator is at rest, so the acceleration is zero. But I'm not going to plug in that number yet. I want to come up with a formula that I could just use once to answer parts a through e. Our goal is to get the normal force by itself. The weight force is mg. So what we need to do is add mg to both sides. So ma plus mg is equal to the normal force. So the normal force is the sum of mg plus ma. So I'm going to factor out m, so we can have this equation. The normal force is going to be m times g plus the acceleration in the y direction. So this is the equation that you want to use for this type of problem. You could answer all parts with that equation. So let's get rid of the other stuff. Now, before I use this equation, I want to calculate the weight of the object to use that as a reference. The weight is mg, and so that's going to be 80 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So the weight of the object, or of the person rather, is 784 newtons. Now, let's calculate the normal force for part A. In part A, the elevator is at rest, so the acceleration of the elevator in the y direction is zero. So the normal force is going to be the mass of 80 times a gravitational acceleration of 9.8 plus the acceleration of the elevator, which is zero. So it's 80 times 9.8, which is 784 newtons. So notice that when the elevator is at rest, the scale is going to read the true weight force or the true weight of the person, which is 784. Now, will it change in part B? What about when the elevator is moving upward at a constant speed of 5 meters per second? Will the answer change? Will the scale read a weight force that's different than the actual weight of the person? So what do you think? 
what should the answer be? Now, what we should be asking is what is the acceleration in the y direction when an object is moving upward at constant speed? Whenever an object is moving at constant speed, the acceleration is zero. So the normal force is going to be the same. It's going to be 784 again. So it won't change. And the same applies for part C. If the elevator is moving downward at a constant speed of 8, the normal force is still going to be 784. So the scale is going to read a weight force of 784. That's what it is going to say. So regardless if the elevator is moving upward at constant speed, downward at constant speed, or if it's moving at rest, the scale is going to read the same weight of 784, which is the original weight. Now for parts D and E, that's going to change. When the elevator is accelerating, the scale is going to detect it. It can either, the weight can either increase or decrease. When I mean weight, the apparent weight that the scale reads, which is the normal force. Now before we calculate the answer for parts D and E, I want you to think about something. Now imagine if you're in New York City, in Manhattan, and you want to go to the Empire State Building. So you enter the building, you're in the lobby, and you go in the elevator. And then you want to go to, let's say, the 50th floor. So you hit the button, and the elevator begins to go up. My question to you is, when do you feel that uncomfortable feeling? Is it when you just enter the elevator? Is it when the elevator begins to rise? Is it when the elevator is going up at constant speed, so from the second to the third to the fourth to the fifth? Or is it when the elevator goes from the 49th to the fifth floor, the 50th floor, where just before it stops or after it stops? When do you feel that uncomfortable feeling? When you first enter the elevator, the elevator is at rest, so you don't feel anything. However, the moment the elevator begins to go up, you feel an upward acceleration. You actually feel it. And whenever you feel that feeling, that's when the scale detects a weight that's different than your natural weight. So your parent weight changes. You, you feel it when it accelerates up. Then eventually, the elevator moves up at constant speed. While it's moving up at constant speed, you don't feel a thing. Now, when the elevator, just before it reaches the top floor, when it comes to a stop, you feel the deceleration of the elevator. But once it stops, you don't feel it anymore. So what I want you to understand is that you feel any time the accelerator, I mean, <laughs> the elevator is accelerating. Whether it accelerates upward or downward, that initial acceleration, you feel it. But when it begins to move either up or down at constant speed, it's hard to detect it. You don't feel a thing. It's like if you're driving the car. You could be driving at 50 miles per hour or 80 miles per hour. If you're moving at constant speed, you don't feel it. However, when you accelerate from 0 to 60, you feel that acceleration. When you slow down the car to a stop, you feel the deceleration. And when you turn, make a sharp turn, you feel the acceleration that's necessary to change direction. So what I'm trying to help you to see is that we don't feel we don't feel motion that's at rest or that's moving at constant speed. We don't feel constant speed motion, if that's a, a term. But if you're moving at constant speed, we don't feel that kind of motion. If you're accelerating, you will feel the acceleration. But if you're moving at constant speed, you won't feel it. Now let's go ahead and finish this problem. So let's calculate the answer to part D. So in part D, the elevator is moving with an upward acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. So AY is positive. It's going to be positive 3. So all you need to do is add 3 to 9.8, so that's 12.8, and then multiply that by 80. So the scale is going to read a weight that is greater than the person's natural weight when the elevator is accelerating upward. 
and so the Euler, of, I mean the scale, is going to read at 1,024 newtons. Now, what about when going downward? So this time, when going downward, the acceleration is negative, so it's going to be negative four. So it's 9.8 minus four, which is 5.8 times 80, and so the scale is going to read a force of 464 newtons. So what you need to take from this is that when the elevator is accelerating upward, the person feels heavier. When the elevator is accelerating downward, the person feels lighter. Now, what's going to happen if the cable snaps? Let's say if the cable snaps and the elevator is in free fall. And let's say just before the cable snaps, the person jumps in the air. Now, the person and the elevator are both in free fall. They're both falling at the rate of 9.8 meters per second squared due to gravitational acceleration. So they're falling with the same downward acceleration. Because they're falling at the same rate, the person's feet will never touch the floor until the elevator actually hits the ground. But while it's falling, the person will feel as if he's in space, as if he's in as if he's floating in the air. At this point, the scale will not read the person's weight. He's in free fall. The normal force would be zero because there's no contact between a person and the scale. And that's the basic idea of free fall. When you're in space, if you're an astronaut in space, you're basically falling towards the Earth, but you don't feel it though. So it feels as if you're floating. And the same thing is happening with the person inside the elevator. If he's falling at the same rate as the elevator, he's going to appear as if he's floating in the air, when in fact he's falling down with the elevator. So that's it for today. That's all I got. And hopefully you liked this video, and if you do, you can find more of my videos on my channel. So thanks again for watching.